Hello, everyone. You know, a headline went across my Twitter feed uh, today that uh, that alleges that uh, women in Calgary get paid 66 cents on the dollar compared to men. So this is our gender pay gap thing coming rearing its head again, right? Now, I am very skeptical that 66 cents on the dollar is accurate, for one. Um, because that is huge. Uh, that's a huge difference. And I'm pretty sure that it's overblown in some way. Uh, now, the, the gender pay gap thing has been discredited by just about every research study that looks into it carefully. Uh, there are ways that you can take numbers that show absolutely no bias in pay and come up with a gender pay gap. Uh, now I'll probably do a video on this at some point in the future, uh, you know, going through a thought experiment on how you can manufacture a, a disparity from numbers that when looked at in detail show no disparity. Uh, is it, it really uh, what happens uh, to get that sort of a disparity is uh, what they're doing is they're adding up the total amount of money paid to you know, total amount of money women earn and dividing it by the number of women and the total amount of money men earn and dividing it by the number of men and then they're uh, comparing the numbers that's basically what they're doing uh, now, the problem with doing it that way is you're not taking in, into account the specific type of jobs that the people are doing. Uh, so what you're doing is you're averaging uh, clerical work with uh, Fortune 500 level uh, uh, corporate management. Uh, you're, you're averaging uh, a doctor, doctor's uh, pay, in with... Uh, well, unskilled laborer. You're averaging all of this stuff together without uh, consideration for the relative distributions of that same amount, same type of work uh, across the uh, categories, in this case, gender. So, uh, it may well be that if you looked at it based on jobs, uh, you may find that uh, <clears throat> at the high end, you may find that the C that CEOs. Now, I haven't done the research. I don't have numbers. I'll just be clear here. You may find that CEO level positions for large corporations are paid the same regardless of gender. But there might be 200 men and five women in that category. Go down to the bottom level of uh, unskilled laborer. And you may have, uh, well, not unskilled laborer, we'll go down to a, a to clerical, we'll go down to clerical. Uh, something that's often relatively low paid. Uh, and you might find there are 20 men and 500 women, right? Well, if, if the pay difference between uh, clerical work and CEO is big, which it probably is, it's probably five or five figures big. Uh, well, you're going to have uh, you're going to be adding up two hundred times big, plus whatever it is twenty say times small, and uh, dividing it by two hundred and twenty, and that's going to skew the average up. Okay, but on the other side, you're going to be adding you know five times big plus 500 times sm uh, small and dividing it by 505 which is going to skew the average down yet you could have both categories being paid exactly the same amount regardless of gender so if you do that kind of methodology you will find your gender pay gap whereas if you look at it 
if you compare like to like and look at the pay in those categories. You may find that the results are considerably more fair. And this is, in fact, what, they, what has been discovered over, you know, through, through a lot of studies, that when you control for relative uh, rates of uh, employment in the various job categories, that there is very little difference in pay based on gender. Basically, uh, it's, uh, things are a lot more fair than the virtue signalers and so on would have you think. Now, that's not to say that if there is some sort of a pay, a, a pay gap in some category, that uh, it shouldn't be uh, rectified. But there are categories where women get paid more than men for the same work, uh, and, uh, and vice versa. So... Uh, you know, we need to be correcting it in the correct direction in each case, okay? Um, but you may be thinking, well, uh, okay, you might accept that. You say, but there's still a pay gap because, uh, in my example here, there were 200 CEOs that were men and five that were women. Well, let me ask you this. Are you stupid enough to become a CEO of a ginormous corporation? Do you even want to be the, in that level of management? Are you willing to make the sacrifices, the personal sacrifices that are necessary to do that? Are you willing to? I'm not. Uh, and I rather suspect a lot, a lot more women are unwilling to make that sacrifice than, than men. I, I suspect there are a lot more men that are stupid enough to make that sacrifice. And as a result, more of them are in that, that position. I rather suspect that is the situation. Uh, sure, uh, we should make sure there are no artificial barriers for women to be CEOs. Sure, but we shouldn't be trying to force exactly equal outcome there either, because if the women don't want to be CEOs, forcing them to be will just give us bad CEOs or be horrible for the women that get forced into it, or both. Um, Seriously. And nobody complains if men don't want to go into, uh, I don't know, early childhood care. Although these days, uh, that's kind of dangerous for men to be doing anyway. Uh, but, you know, let's not go there. Uh, no one's complaining because the majority of, uh, of uh, child care workers are female. Uh, nobody's complaining that they don't have equal gender representation there. So why are we complaining that there isn't that, that there isn't equal gender representation in science and technology fields or in CE among CEOs of Fortune 500 companies or what have you? You know, so uh, even if you're going to allege that the gender pay gap is based on, well, we don't have enough women in these fields, you still need to. Uh, you need to back up your assertion that this is somehow unfair because, because you, have to, you have to come up with the evidence that the women even want to do those jobs and are being barred from it. But if they're simply not choosing to do those jobs, it's hardly unfair. In fact, it would then be unfair to force them to do those jobs. And I think, I think the 66 percent, uh, you know, 66 cents on the dollar pay gap that they've uh, discovered in this study, which the report I read had no information on the methodology, uh, but I think they've probably done exactly what I described and just added up the numbers and divided by the total number of pe people in each category. Um, 
But, you know, you know I, I suspect if this particular uh, 66 cents on the dollar uh, pay gap is, is investigated properly, it won't be 66 cents on the dollar. Once you control for uh, personal choice, like relative uh, uh, employment rates in different, uh, different pay tiers, um, and by pay tier I mean uh, jobs that, you know, I think you'll find that it's certainly not going to be 66 cents on the dollar. And whether they controlled for part-time versus full-time and total hours worked and that sort of thing, I think once you control for, for that, hours worked and, uh, uh, it, you know, relative representation in each job type, I think once you do that, you're going to find that uh, the massive pay gap mysteriously vanishes. Because I don't think it's there. That's not to say there, there aren't some in inequalities in there. I'm sure there are. Uh, odds are there are some going either way. Like there was a, uh, a situation at the BBC where uh, they, it was flagged to them that uh, there might be some uh, inequalities in the pay. That, uh, women might be pay, being paid less for, uh, than men for the same jobs. The BBC investigated and uh, they said, yes, we found something. And we have uh, given a bunch of our highest paid on-air talent a major pay cut. And we have uh, hired, we have adjusted the pay for uh, many other people to match what it should be. And as a result, a few more men than women got pay rises uh, as a result. And that, oh, that was, that was signs of uh, uh, misogyny uh, because more men than women got a pay raise. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, probably if you look at the relative uh, numbers of uh, men and women in the organization, if there are more men than women in the organization by a large enough margin, having a few more men get a pay raise is not an indication of inequality. It could just be that it could be that a smaller percentage of men than women were underpaid. But when you, uh, you multiply that smaller percentage by a larger percentage of overall men, you get a larger raw number. And that's another thing that you can do with these statistics to make, to, to make them lie, is using raw numbers and then saying, oh, well, this raw number is bigger than this raw number, but not considering that the raw numbers represent proportions. And... You know, like 10% uh, of a thousand is a lot bigger than 10% of 10, right? But, uh, so 10% of a thousand is 100, 10% of 10 is 1. So if 10% of all uh, employees at, say, the BBC were uh, underpaid, uh, then if you corrected those 10% and they were all evenly distributed, then, you know, and you had uh, a thousand men and 10 women, then you would expect a hundred pay raises for men and one for, for, for women. Uh, but that wouldn't be a sign of, of uh, bias or anything else. As a matter of fact, if the pay raises were equal between the two, that would be a sign of either previous bias being corrected or bias in the correction. So basically, my whole point here is not that, there, that uh, I know for a fact that there's no gender pay gap or whatever, uh, although I've seen enough information to make me suspect that if, they, if there is a pay gap based solely on gender, then it's a lot smaller than anyone is alleging. 
it's probably a few percent, not 20 or 30 or 40 percent. And if it exists, obviously it should be corrected. Uh, but what, what my point is, is that the whole situation is a lot more nuanced than a number with nothing to back it up. Uh, and just because you say you've done a study, if you haven't shared your uh, methodology, how you came up with your number, where you got your data from, then you don't have information. You just have an assertion. And of course, the news media, they're looking for that uh, clickbait headline, and they don't, uh, they don't look for the details behind it, and they certainly don't publish it in their, uh, a lot of their news stories. So uh, it's, uh, it's hard to know. And this was one of the, the uh, you know, small headlines that a local news organization uh, puts out all the time. And I've noticed there's been a lot of uh, disingen disingenuity, disingenuity, yes, uh, in the uh, in the phrasing of their headlines and even the writing of their their uh, two paragraph uh, articles. So there's definite bias there, and uh, you know, uh, sure, I've got a bias too. I look at look at look at me. I, I'm male, and I'm saying that the gender pay gap is nowhere near as big as, as people are saying it is. Well, obviously, I'm part of the, the patriarchy that's, that's keeping women down. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not for any kind of gender-based discrimination. And I'm not for the affirmative action gender discrimination either. Uh, I am steadfastly against for trying to force equality of outcome. Equality of opportunity, yes. Equality of outcome, if it happens naturally, fine. But if it doesn't happen naturally, that is just as bad as uh, what uh, the uh, social justice types and so on are complaining about now. So, anyway, uh, basic summary, uh, gender pay gap, probably nowhere near the magnitude that this uh, headline is portraying it to be. There is almost certainly a lot more nuance overall. And, you know, unless, you know, the methodologies of these studies are shared and, and explained, then we can't know if these numbers and infographics and so on are accurate. All, all we have are assertions. And I'll leave, leave this off with one more uh, comment. Uh, I will say that anecdotes are not evidence. They're not proof. They're, they're not even really data. So just because somebody tells you that they're being paid less than their male uh, co-worker doesn't mean they are. They might not even have enough information to know that. You cannot trust anecdotes. So just because you're basing your opinion on what your buddy said doesn't mean that your buddy is telling you the truth or even knows the truth. That's why anecdotes cannot be trusted. Anyway, I'll leave off here. Gender pay gap, probably not nearly as big as anyone is asserting that it is these days. Uh, at least not the uh, media types. And nuance. Think about it. And at some point in the future, I'll try and make a video where I, I show in actual detail how you can take any uh, set of numbers, uh, like salaries, you know, where you've got imbalances in representation in various categories, and have it show unfairness where there is none. Because I think it would be uh, quite enlightening for a lot of people to see that. 
it's not hard to do. It's a couple of simple thought experiments is all it will take. Uh, but anyway, that's all for this time. I'll mention that I have a Patreon. If you want to support the channel, great. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash lostwizard. Uh, if you want to kick in some, something, uh, you know, to support the channel, great. If not, that's fine too. Uh, of course, like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever. Uh, let me know if you have an idea for something you want me to uh, ramble about. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.